often in videos, I ask designers to send me their designs as a way to promote them, drive some traffic to them, maybe they can make some sales. It's also content for me and a way to appear that I'm not a complete trash human. I was sent this design from my dear friend Christian, a subscriber and a designer. Now it's a pantograph device that is largely 3D printed and used to inscribe small text or designs into metal. He sent this knowing I also operate a largely derelict crypto channel. If you're unfamiliar with crypto stuff, congratulations, I envy you. Self-custody of funds is kind of a thing. Now in order to do this, you have to secure your funds on various types of wallets. Now should you say lose access to your wallet, you can usually recover it with something like a seed phrase or private keys. Now, usually you write these down on a piece of paper, put them in the safe, and if you lose your wallet, you can use that to recover. But you gotta keep them super secure because anyone can get their hands on it, use it to recover the funds, and suddenly all your stuff's gone. But paper copies of these things are susceptible to the elements and time. So engraving these onto a piece of metal is a great solution. And since you can't trust your local metal engraver guy to do it and also not steal your $100 worth of CASP, your $65 worth of CASP, your $14 worth of CASPA, you need to do it yourself. With this device, you can theoretically engrave into any type of metal, you know, provided you have the right drill bit or wood of any sensitive information that you want to keep safe and that will last the test of time. Probably do hard cheeses too. Now, Christian sells this design as part of a kit that includes a build guide and a list of the other sorts of things that you need to build this, like screws and inserts. It's all meticulously well done. You can 100% tell this was designed by a German person and it's, it's completely thorough. I started the parts here on my FlashForge 85M Pro, which has really performed solidly every time I've used it. I'm doing some of the parts in ABS here. For the rest of the parts, I did some on my FL Sun S1 Pro and some here on my Bamboo P1P. Now, I chose the Bamboo and the FlashForge because they give a very high quality of print every time I use them. I did some on the S1 in hopes of sort of testing it because I've only really done an engineering filament in it before. The Delta printer is very, very fast, but it leaves a lot to be desired in the quality department. I tried dialing down the speeds a little bit to achieve a better result not so much i think with some tuning i could probably get there but so far it's kind of meh which for a 1600 dollars machine is meh next on to assembly following the guide i installed all the inserts using a soldering gun yes i'm doing this freehand because i'm really really ultra skilled and also because i'm ultra lazy i'm not going to print a press to put these inserts in place because to be honest i don't plan on using the, this device beyond the creation of this video. Actually, I'm gonna say that I'm doing this to simulate what an average person would do. I mean, I keep all my stuff on exchanges anyway. <gasps> now I should have followed the guide more closely as it will instruct you for certain parts you need to print at a much finer layer height. All these parts were done at a 0.2 with 15% infill, basically default settings. I ran into several tolerance issues throughout. Christian was very helpful in kind of helping me guide me along the way. So I'm not gonna chalk any of that up to the design because it's in the guide on how to print it and I just kind of bypass past that and I ran into issues where things wouldn't fit and so I just had to reprint them. I cut out a piece of MDF as, as my base, which the guide says to do, and I started assembling. my components I got these which are business card sized pieces of aluminum and they are far too thin to engrave upon I'm gonna hang on to these to do some laser engraving projects later but for the stock I'm gonna engrave upon I just picked this piece up from Lowe's it's a two inch wide piece of aluminum stock and that's why it doesn't really fit into the clamp at least without some encouragement. The guide section has a thorough piece on how to set the depth of your drilling tool and that's where I kind of realized that maybe I should I could benefit from a better bit or a finer bit. I'm thinking the ones that I got simply aren't fine enough. They're a bit chonky for this uh, for this application but let's keep going and see what I can do.
here it is fudge leaves a little bit to be desired <laughs> uh, well it leaves a lot to be desired and again i think a finer bit and some better tolerances screwing things down a little bit better and just putting it together and doing a little bit better job assembling this thing i think i got a could have got a much better result but overall considering i think it's pretty good as a little bit of a bonus i got to thinking i could probably do this by hand so i gave it a shot Mm, how about that? Little Michael J. Foxing going on. <laughs> it's the coffee and the methamphetamine. Can you go one video without an edgy joke? Probably not. I want to thank Christian for sending this over to me and apologize to him for not building the kit to exact standard and doing it justice because, again, this thing was very well put together. That is to say, I would apologize to him if Germans had emotions at all and understood the concept of an apology. I'd like to say that's a joke because Germans don't have a sense of humor either. It's almost like they got rid of all the funny people a long time ago. <laughs> clearly spent a lot of time assembling this, putting this together, testing it out. Out and making a device that's super duper cool, especially for people that want to engrave something into metal that they can't let anyone else do. Uh, this is a perfect thing. All in all, I spent about a hundred dollars just in all the various parts. That's with the bits and the screws and stuff like that. I'm sure you could get these things a lot cheaper elsewhere. Overall, the print costs were negligible because it doesn't use that much in the way of filament. And if you build it out right, then you have a device that you could potentially use for the long term and engrave lots of things, larger things, decorative things, things to sell on. Etsy, whatever. So again, if you want to give it a go, links in the description below over to the kit if you want to buy it. If you're a designer looking to peddle your digital wares on the internet and you want to send them over to me to print and exhibit and maybe even do a little bit better of a job putting it together and doing it justice, emails in the description below. Press like if you're into this type of thing and subscribe for more content like this. I'm the Technicals. See you next time.